fathers that are on the call. And with uh, nothing else there, we'll get started with the Capital Reserve Budget discussion. And there's a link uh, on the agenda. I think, Randy, if you'd please bring that up. Thank you, Mr. Kerr. I'm going to allow uh, Mr. Cronauer to get over the updated document to make sure people understand what he put together, what it looks like, and make sure we're all on the same page with regards to um, some of the upgrades and changes that were made. So, Jared, would you please take over? Yeah, absolutely, sir. Um, we did talk about this three weeks ago, or maybe more, um, at the last audit and finance committee meeting, and we did want to update. Um, I updated it based on some of the conversations that evening, and we can put it on the agenda for next week's audit and finance too, if there's any additional feedback from tonight. But really, there was only three changes made from the previous, <coughs> excuse me, meeting, and that was, um, and I highlighted those in yellow. Um, one of those, the first one, was to actually include an allotment for the music department to start updating musical instruments next year. And that is uh, highlighted there at $65,000 so that they can begin that process um, of updating their instruments. And then Mr. Trout, um, you know, wanting, wanting to spend additional money before his retirement as much as possible here, um, added on a possible new stadium ticket booth, um, which it, it definitely does need replaced. It is falling apart over there. Um, he is going to double check on poss some possible repairs to it, or he wanted to have money in here to possibly have a new one built um, for the senior high. And then also to possibly next year, it's not a number a number one priority, but he is looking at some point here um, to repaint the stadium fencing around the senior high stadium. Um, both items on there he has listed as $10,000. So those are really the only three changes that were made from our last discussion a couple weeks ago at Auto and Finance. Um, open to any discussion that the committee or board <laughs> version of the capital reserve budget for next year. Jared, Ms. Terry, uh, if you could mute your, your mic. Thank you. Uh, when we first discussed the musical things, I thought that we were going to do it over like a three year period or something, but maybe I'm recollecting that wrong. And I'm just wondering how, where the 65,000 or how that was chosen. And then my other comment before I, you know, turn it over, uh, the East Pike roof, I, we need to probably have some discussion on how that's going to be funded. Yeah, absolutely, sir. The sixty-five thousand is a number. Um, the hundred thousand is really just an estimate that you know. In past conversations with the music department, um, they probably have about a million dollars worth of instruments. The hundred thousand, the original hundred thousand put into that budget was just really a, a conversation starter to say that's what we would like to get over the next ten years, every year. Um, the 65,000 is what I wrote down that the audit and finance committee or, or board members who attended that meeting suggested the number be for next year. Okay. I had a couple of numbers jotted down and the 65 was the last one that I had as being thrown out there. Okay. And do you have any comment on the East Pipe Roof funding? Um, we will be making, I mean, we could possibly here um, at the end of this school year be making a, a transfer to capital reserve from the general fund, um, hoping um, uh, that the general fund comes out to the positive this year, as it did last year. Uh, my projections are still showing a six, seven hundred thousand dollar to the positive. I hope it ends up being more than that. Um, but I know the audit and finance as well as the buildings and grounds has been throwing out the idea of doing another transfer from the general fund into the capital reserve. I think that's an excellent way of paying for it. Um, we also have the bond proceeds remaining that could help pay for that as well um, if we didn't want to take it out of capital reserve. Okay. 
we'll go through the committee. Barb, do you have any comments? Oh, I'm looking. Yeah, circle back to me. Okay. Got it. Is Tamara on the line? No, she's not here yet. She'll be here later. Okay. Tom, you raised your hand. Thank you. Yeah, I can always talk about this. Um, Jared, we have 125 for public address systems. Um, and um, I don't see us spending any of that money yet. Um, my concern is um, we need to have those systems functioning. Um, I'd like to see that, uh, um, what Greg has to say about those systems across the district. Um, those are, um, in an emergency situation, those are critical. Um, we talked about the um, auditorium systems were good there. The musical instruments, um, there's instruments laying around the um, senior high and know that are damaged. I assume the 65 is replacing those, but this is also intended for the elementary, the junior high also. So um, um, I expect to see some kind of uh, report back about what they're buying for, for, I mean, the 65 I understand is just a placeholder at this point. Um, is the, um, the junior high stage repairs, uh, is the, would that be underway this summer? Do we know that? Um, I don't know if Greg is on the call or Cheney's here uh, yeah, Greg, tonight. Greg's they would... and, and Cheney yep. both. Greg and, and Cheney, um, are, are everything in the right-hand columns uh, going to be done this summer? Hello? They're refusing to talk to me. Um, no, I, I, with my... With this Chromebook, it's a new one for me there, Tom. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this is a different one. I haven't haven't had this one before. Usually, I'm on my iPad. But anyway, um, a lot of these probably can be uh, at least started or part, possibly addressed. Uh, once they're approved by the board, we would go through and contact vendor. Well, Cheney, well, I'm sorry. Cheney will contact vendors and um, start to see what can be done as far as available parts and systems. Um, when you ask about the PA system, uh, we have um, probably the senior high would be the one that would be addressed first. So that that's one that I, I th would like to see if, if, if Cheney's able to get that one um, up and installed, that would be fantastic. But as far as everything on the right-hand column, those are ones we normally try to do. Uh, Right. The carpet replacement, we always hold off until like right now is when we do, we get a better deal and we usually get a, a better job and, and quicker uh, reaction to them. That's what I've always done in the past. We, that's why we just finished uh, doing five rooms of flooring, um, finished up last week. We have two left to do and we're waiting for the carpet to arrive and that's for Horace Mann. Okay. So your intention is, is that the planned projects would be done this summer? Um, if you can pull that off. Yes. Okay. Um, I do, I do have a question. Um, um, have we, um, have, have we talked about the maintenance truck replacement? Has that already been done? I, I generated a, a quote from, um, through CoStars. That's what that price is. Uh, the stake body that, that had not been put on before. Uh, or had been discussed. That was one that uh, it was given the age of it and starting some of the conditions. We've tried to rotate our vehicles uh, so we don't end up not having a, a truck able to be plowed uh, during plowing season. The stake body is what we use for delivering a lot of our supplies um, and especially our, our larger items. Um, that's what that truck is mainly used for. Okay. Um, I um, all the way down toward the bottom there. We have uh, stage rigging three. I assume that's a senior high, or is because you have you have stage rigging. Um, you have stage repair at the junior high. What's the stage rigging number about? 
I don't have that report in front of me, but I do know that yeah, or, it, or it, annual. it's listed at 60,000 and it's on the, and it's in the right hand column. Yes. I'd have to look at the stage repair, um, report. It, it comes from them. I didn't bring that home with me. It's actually, I gave it, I believe to Cheney today. So um, it's Cheney's fault. Uh, no, I gave it to him to put it on his desk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, a little more clarity on that one. Um, Band uniforms. I thought we replaced the band uniforms three or four years ago. Are they are they up for repair or replacement again? Uh, Mr. Arthur, we replaced those back in 2014. Uh, so we had to do it again. I don't know if he cut out Mr. Harley or not. Jared, are you still with us, sir? In absence of his um, responding, Mr. Harley, I'll get some additional information. Okay, that'd be fine. Um, Jared, are you there? Yeah, I'm sorry. That's right. Jared, can you speak to about uh, the band uniforms? It looked like we got them in 2014. Do they need replaced right now, or do you want to get out of them? They do not need replaced right now, but the last time we replaced them, they were about 10 years old. Um, 10, 11 years old, and I just wanted to put them on there so that we kind of had a placeholder for the next couple of years as we work through this budget. Because um, I know the last time we replaced them in 2014, there was conversation at the time of having the boosters help pay for those. Um, and that's not something if the board still wishes to do that, that um, we can, I feel, throw at the boosters at the last minute. So it may be something we want to start preparing them for if the board's going to ask them to do that in a couple of years. Okay. And, and unlike the instrument, unlike the instruments, um, we, when we replace these, we need to replace all of them at the same time, as opposed to just the ones that are rotted. That, that's what I remember from the previous conversation. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and like that, I said, we still, we still have two or three years on those. I just wanted to include them on here to start the conversation over the next couple of years. Okay, maybe you could change that one to a three. <laughs> okay, um, and uh, uh, Greg and, and Cheney are there. Um, you have 20,000 for asbestos floor replacement. Um, do, where would that be? Greg can't find his button again. <laughs> I was on another screen trying to find the information on the stage rigging for you. Um, the I don't, I don't know if that would cover the East Pike multi-purpose room, but we're starting to have a few tiles lift in that area, so that's definitely one that needs to be considered. Okay, but that would be. Um, I hope we're running out of um, places that we have asbestos. Is that true? Oh, you still have underneath all the carpet at uh, Eisenhower yeah. and Ben yeah, Franklin. That, we still have the, you know, the there, there are places, yes, but we are running compared to where okay. we were 10, 15 years ago. Yes, we've abated a tremendous amount of, of asbestos in those years. Yeah, the tile, the tiles under the carpets are not exposed to students. Okay, so your plan is to um, to get the East Pike multi-purpose room done this year, this summer. Well, that would that would be that would be they would never be able to be done this summer. You'd have to look at that would the money could be set aside and have it in preparation for as soon as school would be out next summer. Everything could be lined up and ready to go. Uh, jobs, something like that cannot happen. Um, quick enough in this school year or this summer, I should say. And you're always looking at, at your next, the end of your next school year, uh, because okay. it takes time. But we... By the time you line the abatement contractors um, and you have secure enough flooring for something that large, you're going to need much more time than um, trying to set it up starting um, after it's approved uh, for the 1st of mm -hmm. July. You would never have enough time to get that much work done. So you're just trying to slough it off the Cheney. 
Yes, yeah. Okay, why don't you um, um, break that um, down as a separate line item and give it a number one and, and pull it up. Um, and let's get that let's get that moving forward. Okay, on, on this chart, Jared. Yes, sir, I can do that. Yeah, yeah. That's, um, are the other multi-purpose rooms in similar situations, Greg? You keep calling it as soon as I get to another screen. Um, the, I, I believe that's the last multi-purpose room that we have asbestos tile in. Okay, um, let's, let's get it gone, okay? So let's, let's move it forward. Uh, pull it up, give it a number one and uh, Leave the uh, leave the remainder for uh, for places we don't know about. You done, Tom? <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for you to like jump in here and tell me what I'm doing wrong. Thanks. Yeah, okay, I'll circle back to Barb. Thanks, Harry. Um, Greg, a, a long time ago, well, four years ago, it was mentioned about the buildings need repointed. Um, where is that sitting on on this list? Is that still a few years out, or is that getting closer to the top? That goes with the stack replacement, and a lot of that de depends on discussion with the schools. Uh, we, we've talked about that for um, Eisenhower, the possible removal of that stack since it's no longer needed. So and any of the ones that aren't needed, it should be investigated. And instead of just repointing, possibly removing, that way you don't never have to you're repointing something that you're not using anymore. Um, Greg, so. Greg, Greg, let me jump in. There's a line item number th third one down masonry repairs for 25,000. I assume that's uh, repointing and uh, spot repointing where you need it to be. The 25,000 masonry repair. No, that's, <clears throat> excuse me, that's general sidewalk repairs, curbs, things like that. We do every year. We normally, uh, like last year we did um, at East Pike, the, uh, the new walkway to, the A wing, okay. and we had miscellaneous sections. One that goes across from out of admin to the other parking area. That part we had some down at our maintenance building. That's that, what those rooms are for. That should be labeled then concrete repair, shouldn't it? Yes, it should. Okay. But, but, but to further my my question slash comment, so. The main buildings, then, um, their reporting's okay, then, for many years? That's something you have to look at every year. Um, point they might look okay this year, start to degrade pretty quickly. So there are, we have been doing some spot repointing at our buildings. We, we've done um, some at Ben Franklin last year. We also did some at um senior high school there are always points with that much brick and block that we have you will always have something around that you're going to need to three point that's it thanks okay thanks barb and that that chimney at eisenhower that was discussed with bucard horn to uh put that into their design to remove that chimney. Uh, let's see, there was one other thing I wanted to mention maybe on this thing, I'm trying to think. Uh, Mike, any other board members wanna raise their hand? If you need to. Cinda, go ahead. Yeah, so this is probably the only time you're gonna hear me say this. But is it possible to make that document smaller so that I can see the bottom of it? Okay, I couldn't see the asbestos or remove the boiler stack. That's fine. That's good, right? Right there. That's perfect. Um, and I do have the same kind of question that Tom did because there, there are two separate places in the list that have to do with stage repairs and stage rigging. So if those could all be somehow put together, unless they're two totally separate things, um, 
that was a little bit confusing. And then I do have to ask the, the carpet that gets replaced every year, is that carpeting that is installed in rooms that do not have asbestos in them? Or are we replacing carpeting that is over asbestos? Because for $50,000 a year, it would seem like it should be more cost effective to remove the asbestos and then maybe not have to replace the carpeting so often. I don't, I don't know. I'm just asking. That's all. Yeah. The, the rooms that we have listed right now, we did uh, uh, two science rooms at the senior high, which was regular uh, VCT tile. And we put a, um, a luxury uh, VCT tile or re replacement flooring in, uh, which is a no wax style floor, which is more costly for initial installation but you recoup the time and money from ever having to wax it again. It's like what we did in the cafeteria at the senior high school, and which is holding up extremely well. So we have, we are changing some of the flooring. Now we just removed two floors, <clears throat> excuse me, at the junior high school, um, room one and I believe it's 16. Um, those ones, we went from carpet to a, uh, a VCT tile also on the wax so that will eliminate Hafton to um use carpet tractors in those ones and for those the two, two particular classrooms that were chose at that particular school was because of the the students and the use for that um that's the reason we had chose those ones now we have some carpet at horace mann that we have slated that's what we're waiting for the uh, we were hoping to use a VCT tile in that, but with it given the wood floor that's underneath that um, and not having conditioned space, our vendor was very concerned the movement and how it would adhere and stay down. So he recommended that we do not go with the, the LVT, that we would still maintain using the uh, carpet tiles that we have been using. Um, when we go to replace in the classrooms at the other buildings that do have tile we have been going over top and not removing because of the um, time frame it takes to do an abatement in those areas okay thank you okay thanks uh Greg, yeah. uh, terry yeah yeah um what greg's doing with the carpeting it's called encapsulation and you can do that with non-friable asbestos. That's uh, more than legal uh, right. all the time. Right. Yeah, the thing I was going to say, at Eisenhower, uh, the fellow who was in charge of that fire restoration there said that they had abated some of the uh, asbestos flooring in that west hallway, I believe. If I don't see anybody else's hands raised, so I'd say, Jared, and Greg, please make the changes that we discussed to this, and then uh, we'll vote on it at the next meeting. Yes, sir. Can we have the agenda back, please, Randy? Okay. This Second thing is the getting security contract. I think Mr. Mike Travis was going to uh, talk about his rationale for extending this. And from what I understand from a previous meeting, we have a new contact at getting. So if you could tell us who that is, Mike. Thanks. There we go. Got the microphone on now. Good evening, everybody. Um, yeah. Um, for several years, we have been utilizing Giddings Protective Services to uh, get the district up to speed and get us, you know, uh, make sure that uh, we're uh, following following guidelines, state guidelines for safety, security, as well as improving the safety and security overall in the district. Um, we do have a new contact with him now. Is uh, his name is Bob Johnson. Uh, Bob came to Giddings from 
uh, Johnstown. He was chief of police of Johnstown, and prior to that, he spent uh, 25 years. He retired from uh, hey, hey, Mike, 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 Pennsylvania Mike, State Police. Yes, Mike, Mike, you're fading you're in and, fading out, on and us. out on us. All right, I don't know if I have bad signal here at the house because of the storms or what. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's a lot better. Thanks. Okay. So yes, um, yeah. Bob comes to us. Bob co comes to Giddings from uh, Johnstown. He was chief of police in Johnstown. Prior to that, he retired from Pennsylvania State Police. So he has a extensive background in uh, in uh, school police or in policing, law enforcement. Um, also with Bob, Bob has uh, another gentleman that works with him hand in hand. By the name of Vince Mock. Vince also came from state police and had some experience as a school resource officer down in Winbur School District prior to coming to Gettings. Um, they've been uh, involved this past year uh, going through the uh, assessments, building security assessments in all our buildings, uh, making the recommendations uh, for the improvements that we, uh, that we uh, shared with you prior to this uh, that uh, you folks approved for us to to proceed with. Um, he's also been uh, very involved in helping us to update our emergency operation plans that we have currently going on. The uh, proposal that they have uh, presented to us uh, for the coming year uh, includes uh, training as uh, involving uh, threat assessment, uh, which is now required by the state. Uh, we have uh, we have plans to conduct uh, threat assessment training in all of our buildings with our threat assessment teams, uh, our student assistance programs, our guidance counselors, our health services. Uh, everybody is involved in that. Um, also, uh, we have plans to uh, do some active shooter training again um, with our staff uh, during an in-service period as well as um, making sure that our emergency operation plans are updated for the current year. So the, the proposal that they have, I believe, uh, I believe you guys have it, uh, can look over it, but uh, the proposal that they have for us, um, we uh, definitely are looking forward to using them again for the coming year. Okay, well, um, Mike, you may need to mute if you're done. Okay, thank you. I'm guessing, Jared, this will be on next uh, June 28th agenda to ratify this next contract from what I'm reading here. It will be, sir, if the committee recommends it, yes. Any comments, questions? Please raise your hand. Not seeing any. It looks like, well, it looks like Barb. Go ahead, Barb. Um, sorry, Mike, I, I really, you faded in and out. I really couldn't hear you too well, but um, I don't know. I guess for administration, the question is, was having gettings this past year i um i realized with with COVID it was a kind of odd year but is it really worth the money like exactly um are they giving knowledge that our school districts you know hasn't learned yet to to really try to figure out what we need to do i, I believe when we originally signed on to them it was it two years ago or three years ago that they were supposed to come in, train us what to do because we didn't know, you know, we had an experience this. Um, I'm just kind of curious, uh, you know, is this looking to be more long-term the next five, 10 years, or is just one more year um, good enough? I don't know if, I don't know if your microphone will work well enough for me to hear you, Mike, if you have to comment or somebody else from admin can join in. Thanks, Mrs. Barker. Um, I would just say that uh, you know, with the with the changes and policies that the state's coming down with security, um, they are keeping us up to speed with what's being required, um, in particular threat assessment and the things of that, you know, things like that. Um, I see 
I see a, a value in in having them on for this coming year. Definitely. I mean, we can. Uh, right now, we we do annual agreements with them, and I think we can uh, we can revisit it next year. But um, yeah, we we have big plans for this year uh, moving forward. Jared, would you take a minute just to explain, you know, the amount of the contract and how it's paid? Certainly, sir. Um, the contract itself, and I don't believe I have it right here in front of me, is right around twenty thousand um, dollars. It is a budget item that we've had, and you know, we've had it for a couple of years now. And the original amount when we first brought Giddings on was $40,000 and that was because we had a, a lot of work to do as a district and we've come a long way. Uh, I think we still have some room to grow and, and things to learn, but I think having Giddings here to help us through that is very important. And I think in the future, we may be able to find ways to further reduce um, the contract itself as we get better things in place. I think this year they spent a lot of time working with the committee the safety committee within our admin group just for things we need to do to our buildings to help with safety um and as we get those in place of course there's always things changing but a lot of stuff is, has been marked off our checklist uh, you know as it even continues to still grow but we are getting there um i just think i i recommend having them here for another year but I think we're going to get a point where maybe that amount is a lot smaller and maybe they're just coming in to help with the safety drills, um, maybe doing periodic checks of our buildings, maybe not every year, but maybe every other year. Um, I just don't think we're, in my opinion, we're there yet. Um, that we've reduced it in half at this point. Hopefully we can further reduce that in the near future. Sorry. Thanks, Jared, and that helped. I think the topic number three sort of uh, confirms why we still need them. There is a series of things that are going to be discussed at executive session on June 28th with Giddings and, and dealing with school safety that we're still working on. So, Mr. Schroth, you have your hand up. Yes, sir, I do, Terry. Thank you. Um, Training is something that never stops. Um, you can't just say, well, we're going to have everybody trained and then we can sit back in, in, in our laurels and we don't have to train anybody for the next five years because everybody knows or has been through the training. The second thing is, I, I agree, Jared, uh, with your, your premise that there may be a time when the contract gets further reduced, but I don't think that there'll ever come a time um, that you um, would not want a security agency involved uh, as dangerous as the world is that we live in today. The bad guys are always changing what they do. Uh, there are things that we're not aware of on a regular basis, and that's the job of these folks is to help us figure that out, constantly be updating our policies and our procedures, as well as ensuring that all of our staff is trained. So I, I think there's going to be a place for these folks, um, or maybe not these folks, depending on their performance, of course, but rather the, that kind of safety uh, security um, um, is dangerous as the world is today. Okay. Thank you, Walter. And I don't see any other hands raised, so we can move on to number three. I don't know if Mr. Travis or... Mr. Kernauer. Um Yeah, just uh, just as a uh, a point of information, I will be at the next board meeting to meet with you uh, folks in in executive session um, under uh, state requirements through PCCD. Uh, we have to provide a report to um, the school board, uh, uh, an annual safety security report. So I will be presenting that uh, annual safety security report to you at the next executive session. Okay, thank you. Any questions on number three? Not seeing anything, we'll move on to non-agenda items. Turf removal, looks like we have removal of the old turf was last week and new turf is being installed this week. 
Anything else on turf? Terry. Terry. Yes, I, drove, I drove by um, North 6th Street uh, about 3 o'clock this afternoon and looked down over the bank, and I got to tell you, that red is sure red <laughs> in the end zone. It, it really stands out. The colors are extremely bright. Um, but, uh, you know, from that bird's eye view, it look, it, uh, looks pretty good over. Okay. Thank you. And Cheney, Greg, anything unforeseen, anything that we should know about? They were a little bit late on delivering the turf material, the fabric itself today that was supposed to have been here on Saturday. Uh, they had a little hiccup there with, uh, transportation, but it has arrived. I don't think all of it is here yet. It'll be coming in truckloads. Um, I shared some pictures with Randy O'Neill. If anybody's interested, um, he could uh, bring those up. If you're interested on some of the removal and or uh, part of what they have laid down currently. Well, what they have laid down, by the way, is not anything. It um, does not have any of the inlays in yet. And when I say an inlay, that's your yard line or your um, hash marks, that type of thing. Any of the, the, like the, where it says Indiana, first they lay out the entire carpet uh, fabric and then they put in, they start, they, they cut out and then seam in the other materials. And thanks, Greg. And for reference, were, were people standing around saying, boy, this, this was a lot worse than we thought? Or was there any comments for the removal while they were tearing it up? Um, not really. It, it was just the, the, the fact that um, the height of the carpet was greatly diminished. Um, w after they removed the carpet itself, they um, had to do some releveling. They were a couple inches low in one area just from where, which is normal for them and they addressed all that between um friday and actually this morning they were finishing some of that when the team came in that puts the the fabric down itself they go over the entire field to double check to make sure everything is at, at the spec okay what's the estimated time of completion it was the, it was two weeks from um, when they would start laying the fabric down, so they expected it just after the, the 4th of July. Um, we actually, they were hoping to get in to start a little bit sooner, um, and Hempfield actually is the one that is waiting now for their field because we um, snuck in ahead of them. And thanks, Greg, and everybody for what we you know everybody did on this to to get this completed this year and, and you know early in the summer so great job walter you raise your hand again Go ahead. yeah terry um i i guess my question is to either greg or or uh, mike our superintendent here um i know they were going to try to find a home for some of that carpet apparently it, some of it might have had a useful life uh, left for some, um, you know, auxiliary type uses. Uh, were we able to do that? Were we able to uh, find a second home for some of it? Thanks, Mr. President. I'll jump in and Greg, if you don't mind clarify anything I misspeak on. That was our intention. However, the provider, uh, the company who installs these, um, had some grave issues and concerns with that and advised that we do not do that. Uh, so we were unable to do it based upon uh, their extreme concerns with possible litigation issues. We had a waiver ready to go that we thought met their criteria of the law and our solicitor was okay with. But again, they issued some um, issues or concerns that, hey, we seen other schools do waivers and didn't hold up in court. So I made the call then not to give it away based upon their recommendation and great concern, sir. And I apologize for not communicating that, but I thought that was in the scope of my authority and we wanted to give it away. But they were pretty, I've never seen someone be so interested not to. I erred on the side of caution and went with their recommendations. Well, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you made the call, Mike. 
question was and not about the call, just to just really uh, wanting an update as to what, what the status was. Yes, sir. Greg, did I misspeak on anything that you want to clarify, sir? No, I, excuse me, I think that's that, that's correct. Um, the, the carpet, once they started removal, was no longer our product. It became um, East American's product at that point. They are sending it back down to, I believe, Georgia <clears throat> is where they are recycling the material. Uh, they commented that they were at the price to recycle opposed uh, compared to landfill. It actually cost a little bit more to recycle, but they were shipping it down to recycle because, according to uh, Brian Forrest, was this is the right thing to do, which I uh, was very proud to hear that um, we were recycling, even though it cost, it, or it cost his um, company a little more to recycle than it did to put it in the landfill. Uh, that's just something that's nice to hear that companies are looking at that. And sometimes the bottom line is not what they're looking at. They're looking at the correct procedures as far as recycling. All right, thanks. Good news on all of that. I agree with Mr. Bush. I really didn't think we, you know, if there is a liability with letting someone else use something like that. So it's a good call. Uh, number two item, anything, I guess, any questions, comments? I don't see anybody's hand raised. So I want to move on to number two. Grade configuration conversation discussion facilitated by Mr. Schroth. And I'm glad we have a fair amount of people on the line tonight. I think this is going to be a, well, I know it's an important discussion. And, you know, I just ask that everybody sit back in their chairs and listen to the presentation. Thanks. Go ahead, Walker. Uh, thanks, Gary. Um, I don't have a, a formal presentation um prepared as such um i did publish um what's i guess now becoming known as a white paper um based on a vision that i have for possible configuration of our elementary schools based uh, well i believe on on the academics behind it i think that as we begin to move through this uh, oh by the way that was distributed to to all the board members and now that it's being discussed, it, it, it now becomes public and can be put on the on the website and, um, you know, sent to, I know I've had a, at least one a request from outside uh, the school district uh, to see a copy of it. Uh, but uh, the bottom line is that um, the fire changed everything and it now presents an opportunity for us to take a look at at our how our buildings are configured with, with what grades we have whether we continue the um pre-k to three four five six eight and nine twelve or as we learned about two weeks ago at tom's meeting from aaron um that it is possible to put the entire fifth grade in the middle school um it now begs the question or raises the issue uh, do we maybe go to pre-K to four buildings, um, a five through eight building, and then a nine through 12 building? And I think that the, the board really has to sit down here and uh, what I kind of envisioned was a, a structured approach to looking at these various items um, and kind of come to a conclusion before we begin to spend too much more effort on whatever repairs we have for Eisenhower um, and or the other buildings because they could be impacted uh, by the various various options that we need to basically decide on. One of the overdriving forces that the fire has, uh, has done uh, that has really kind of brought this to light is the fact that Eisenhower will uh, sit idle for at least 12 months I think there are some board members that think it may be longer than that while well, whatever repairs and renovations are done with it. The question then becomes one to the general public, well, if you could uh, present your students with um, a good education for 12 months with only three buildings, why do you need a fourth building? And ergo the question then of uh, 
whether or not you, um, if you move to fifth grade, whether or not uh, that doesn't trigger some additional conversations about about the number of, of buildings that would meet that academic requirement. So what I would like to do is to start that conversation. Um, at this point, I'd kind of like to have just a general conversation with the board members, um, answer any questions that they may have had on the white paper and or, and again, I want to emphasize that white paper was simply a way to start this conversation was not meant to be the end all. The end all really needs to come from the various committees. It needs to come from the community and we need to kind of figure this out collectively. It's meant strictly as a starting point in the conversation. Um, but at this point, I'd like to have a little general discussion on this. I don't want to get too far afield here, uh, but then if time permits, I'd like to start some sort of an analysis um, 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 you know, on the process of how, how to actually figure this, how to figure this out. Um, Ter Terry, do you want to call the balls and strike there? Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to first, uh, I guess, thank you, Mr. Shroth, for uh, taking the time to put together that white paper. Uh, reading it, you put a lot of thought into it. This has been a point of I don't want to say discussion, but it has been a point among many of us that we were probably going to get to a point where a decision had to be made. Uh, you know, I know all of us have looked at different things, and I looked at in Roman here about a year ago, and over the past 21 years, Indiana Area School District has lost almost a 1,000 students. I think it's 981. So, again, that begs the question of, you know, do we need six buildings and, and then how should they, you know, the remaining ones, how should they be configured? And I really applaud you on saying that we should look at this from a curriculum standpoint, that that should be number one. And then there's many other things, which, you know, budget is one, uh, the community is another, like you mentioned, uh, there's many other facets or, or tentacles that we can, we can, you know, look at. The other thing that I'll say too is that we're sort of in a lucky position, like you're saying, with the Eisenhower uh, fire, and we're learning some things with the junior high capacity. Uh, we also have a lot of background information already from many reports that have been done when the uh, I'll call it the mega school was going to be built at Ben Franklin. So we, you know, we've done many, many reports. Uh, we have a lot of background information, so that should help us going forward here. Uh, I would like to throw out, you know, that, you know, a next step and that's on the next thing on the agenda is that, you know, I'm going to recommend it. We do need to, you know, work on this in a transparent way, but also a timely fashion too because we don't want to wait for a year you know to, to do something so and then i'm one of the board members that is saying that ike is going to take longer than a year i'm going to i'm going to throw out two years look at what we did with the east pike office i don't i have not heard whether the uh, new furniture is in that office yet, but the last I asked, which was probably three weeks ago, it is not. And that office is still not being utilized. And I believe that that office started over a year ago. And that's just a uh, 3,000 or so square foot addition. Um, as part of that brainstorming, I think like I mentioned it, we'll need to talk about a timeline and sort of set a target uh, and not to rush through this, but you know, anytime that you do work through a step process to come up with a result, you should have, you know, an end in mind. And so I saw Tom, you had raised your hand earlier. Yeah, Terry, um, you have to, you have to give the um, work at East Pike a little break because they had three, four months off uh, the 
uh, supply chain was is is was and is completely disrupted. Um, but I, I think we need to hold, put our feet in the fire and um, try to get uh, some uh, conclusion um, by fall of 2022. Um, it's, it's, it's easy to push it another year, um, and we may in fact have to do that, but I certainly don't want to start out that way. Um, I, I like your uh, concept of uh, having uh, focused meetings. I'd like to, do, um, I'd like to uh, bring in some help um, um, from outside the district to um, uh, facilitate um, f facilitate these meetings, uh, make them uh, useful. But I also um, want uh, want to do them uh, do them in July, maybe slip into August. But but by then we need to have a decision. Uh, we have to put uh, we have to we have to um, uh, put Eisenhower back together or not, um, and. Um, the decision isn't going to be any easier. We've certainly had the discussions over the last uh, few years about this, um, and um, and uh, Walter's right in that the uh, f um, the fire has changed everything. Um, we we know now that we actually can put another class into the junior high. That was just a theory before. So um, I'd, I'd like I like permission to bring some kind of proposal to the board uh, for approval for you know facilitator to help us with the. Uh, with these meetings, um, get an engagement with the community, and work through work through the pluses and minuses of standing pat or changing the configuration or changing the academic configuration. There's a lot of balls to toss up in the air, and uh, we need the whole community to um, to participate. Thank you. All right, thanks, Tom. And, and I'll say, you know, my first reaction was I don't want to spend more money, but I can see a benefit to having a facilitator someone that can take notes uh, put together some some fact sheets uh, look through some of our old reports maybe and, and gather some information and stuff so you know that that would probably help the administration also and like you said would definitely help the community involvement anybody else raising their hand Janet Barton. Um, Terry. Yeah, go ahead, Joey. I, I saw Barton raise right your hand. I didn't see you. Oh, I can't. I'm sorry. Can I? I just have a quick question. Go ahead. This is all surprising to me. Um, what? So I'm hesitant to to to, to plow forward in a big way right now. I just think Walter's brought up some interesting points. But um, my question is, the insurance proceeds that we receive from Eisenhower School, I don't think it's good to have any discussion until we find out if those can be moved or not from that district, from that building. And that's, that's just a basic rule of the road. Like, what are we actually dealing with here? Before we get into dreams about what we want versus what we can actually afford and what we can actually accomplish within a feasible time frame which sometimes sometimes time costs you money so you have to pay a little bit more for to get out of a two-year framework but that's my key question is what i thought that the gentleman said that that you couldn't necessarily do that easily and i don't remember his name but that was early on in the discussion so i don't know if mike has gotten to, to answer that question yet or not so thank you i thought that that gentleman had a charge rep that was like the statewide guy he said you know once we got that money we could do with it what we wanted is what i recollect him saying but bart uh, that's my understanding as well sir that once we come to an agreement with the insurance company that money is ours to use as we see fit whether it's to fix eisenhower or to invest in another building okay thank you jared barb well, that was going to be my question was um, where exactly, like, what exactly is going on at Eisenhower right now? What has been done since the fire and, um, you know, and any work that needed to be placed on that one side of the building? 
I think that was all put on hold, Barb. Uh, they did do some restoration, uh, you know, with the smoke odor, and they sealed the walls uh, with a sealer. And like I mentioned, they did some floor work. They basically stabilized the building. They uh, patched up the roof so it wouldn't be leaking. And uh, there has not been any work being done there lately. So, so being done at Eisenhower is being held up until we have these and figure out how we're going to go forward uh, with the buildings. Is that correct? That's what I understand, yes. Because if you recall the last, I think, building grounds meeting, we were going to uh, discuss like how many classrooms we were going to put on to Eisenhower uh, as far as replacing and we were going to add any. But then uh, Mr. Schroth had presented, had sent the white paper to the board here, you know, a couple of weeks ago. So that's why that's not on the agenda tonight but his white paper is so um uh, walter could you go through and explain your white paper by chance it's it's quite quite long and um maybe explain more your reasoning please bar before walter does that um oh yeah um let's go back to your other question about what condition the eisenhower is in um and um i see is Greg still on the phone? Um, I believe what they did is they removed all the ceiling tile. They cleaned the, they cleaned the, the soot, um, but they haven't put anything back yet um, of any of any magnitude. Um, I, I think that's where it stopped. Is, do we know that to be true? That's correct. They have not done anything um, at all as far as so, any rewiring or anything. Uh, yeah. The ceiling tiles all out, all the lights are all out. All furnishings are out being cleaned. Uh, they have brought a few boxes back that the principal has requested, um, and that's the extent of it right now. Okay, so if, if I, Greg, if I walk in that building now, the ceiling tires are down, the grid's still in place, the walls are wiped down and sealed. Um, um, is there anything else that um, they've done? No, as a matter of fact, the ceiling tile grid is only in still in place uh, on the non-academic wing which would be the, the south one wing. where you have the it, correct wing. the yeah. <clears throat> right the the academic wing uh, there isn't any ceiling grid lights anything at all it's right down to the uh, the tectum roofing uh the beams mm -hmm. and the, goes up to the walls they had they'd removed all of the old ceiling and even the previous ceiling the the original um uh, ceiling that was in that school that all came down so that they could finish prepping it, get it cleaned and uh, encapsulate with the, the primer. Um, did they, did they remove the carpeting in that, in, in the West wing? No, no, there has not been anything done with the carpets in those classrooms uh, either way. Did they, did they scrub them or anything? Does not look at, it looks like there's a powder residue on them. They, they might've put something on to help encapsulate it uh, mm -hmm. on, on, on that wing. Okay. Okay. So, 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 what we have is the building semi demolished um, back to uh, back to where we could go in and start working in a positive way. Correct. Okay. And, and that was the plan. Tom, um, if you recollect, we were having we started to have discussions with Beefheart Horn. We even met them out at the site to uh, start uh, renovation design, but then we put that on hold. Also, yeah. So yeah. And really and. and Terry, I just wanted to make sure everybody understood where we were in that building. Yeah. And Mr. Kurt, I can add in. Um, we did make one decision if we were to build a entryway where that would go. That was decided upon. And additionally, Mr. Kerr, for your convenience or any other committee uh, members, convenience, Scott and Elijah from Buchart Horn are on the call. I asked them to be on this call this evening because I told them they cannot proceed until we get a vision. But they're here if you have any questions for them or you need any input. I just want to make it known, sir, they're on the call. Okay. Uh, Josie, normally we stay with the board members first, so if you don't mind holding on, I'm going to go to Walter next and then Cinda. Terry, I'll defer to Cinda and then you can come back to me. Go ahead, Cinda. 
So I would just like to know, does anybody know where we are in the, um, the, the agreement or the negotiations or the talks with the insurance company? How close are we to knowing how much money they're going to give us as the settlement? Or is that still, it, it, what's, the, what's the, the paperwork situation? Thanks, Ms. Cinda. I'll turn it over to Jared. I know I asked him to follow up and he was trying to follow up and uh, I don't know if he got a comment back or feedback back from the, um, the company or not, but Jared, can you respond accordingly? Absolutely. I have reached out a couple times to um, try and get a hold of um, Mr. Renday, the, the gentleman uh, from CM Region who oversees the settlement for the insurance company. I reached out probably twice over the past two weeks and have not heard back from him. Um, Stefan, the gentleman who works for Fire and Water Restoration, who is doing the cleanup, I have talked to him as well. And basically, from his end, he has submitted everything, their reports, their engineering reports, everything that he has worked through um, to the insurance company is really just kind of waiting to hear back from them. So. I will continue to reach out um, to the insurance company to see if they have officially prepared a proposal that the district can, can consider. But as of right now, I've not received one nor have heard back from them. Okay. Thanks, Jared, for the update. And uh, I would, I, I'm sure we all encourage you to continue to reach out because uh, it'll be a back and forth before we can reach a settlement. And, Something that was brought up and, and it, it may come to light so we could put it on the parking lot of our brainstorming sessions is all the uh, material, furniture, that sort of thing, stuff is being stored currently and it's being paid for by the insurance company. But if and when we do reach a settlement with the insurance company, I would think that that rental fee they're going to want to push that on to the school district and from discussions with them jared correct me if i'm wrong they said it may be beneficial for us to find an alternative place to store that stuff because of the cost of where it where it's being stored now and uh if i re remember right it's maybe down around gibsonia or somewhere like that uh, so we Jer or, uh, Greg, I think mentioned the uh, there's there's room available like at the Indiana Mall that's maybe a dry condition space. That but again, I don't want to get into you know lengthy or any discussion tonight. Be just a parking lot thing. Any other board members have any comments or just just to add on to that, sir, real quick. And I know you don't want to get into a whole lot of discussion, but we have we had a meeting with Fire and Water. Uh, two weeks ago with Aaron, uh, myself, and Greg to discuss when we can start bringing some of the stuff back that the teachers will use at the junior high next year. You know, a lot of the classroom stuff, we got by for a couple weeks, a couple, you know, almost two months this year, um, but they're going to need a lot of that next year. So a lot of that stuff is going to come back here probably in July to be placed in the classrooms at the junior high. Some of the bigger stuff, we do not need and we will find places for that. Greg and I have already started reaching out to local places. Um, we reached out to the, uh, and actually went for a, a tour the other day of the old Fisher Scientific Building, which has lots of space. Um, I can tell you the quote we got from them was about three times as, higher, as high as what um, Fire and Water quoted us to keep the stuff there. So we're continuing to look even locally. Um, we've been having, I had some conversations with the mall as well as IUP. So we will continue to update the board and continue to look for options as you are correct. The insurance company will only pay to store it through the end of August. At that point, it'll be our responsibility to store it somewhere and pay the bill. Okay. So I'm throwing that out there. Reason, one, one of the reasons I wanted to throw that out there was to provide the information, but also maybe someone could come up with an idea of where there is a place available that's uh, a reasonable cost. Cinda. 
Exactly what size of a storage area do you need? How many square feet? Excellent question. Um, right now, they down at the warehouse and with fire and water, everything is taking up about 20,000 square feet. Now that is not well organized. That is laying out on a floor. Some of the stuff is stacked a little bit. Um, I think once we kind of bring up what we need to actually run the classrooms, we will have a better idea um, if it's going to be 15 or you know 10, 15 thousand square feet. Um, it will also depend if we can stack some of that and shrink wrap some of that we can reduce that footprint as well. And it'd just be, if we can find a place locally, do they have um, equipment that can stack it or shrink wrap it as well? So it's, but at the most it's 20,000 square feet. Okay, thanks. All right, any other board members? If not, Josie, thanks for hanging on. Um, as a member of the public, I'm kind of confused. I, it seems like we're caught between a rock and a hard place. If Mr. Shroth wants to begin a dialogue concerning what to do with Horace Mann and how we proceed with Eisenhower, we're kind of caught with negotiations with the insurance company. We begin school in two months. You want to have a facilitator come in and meet with the public. The public has to digest this. The white paper is supposedly going up maybe tomorrow for people to absorb, and then you have to come back and decide when you will have these discussions. I, I'm, I'm at a loss for words as to how we're going to move forward if we can't, if, if you can't deal with the insurance company in a, a timely manner. We're two months out from school starting, and I know how how elementary um, teachers value that building time to get ready for their classroom. So I, I, I just wanted to make that comment. I think you're going to have to think judiciously about how you're going to go about this. It's, it's rather amazing to me that um, you're opening another door that we are not sure we can open yet due to the negotiations with the insurance company. So that's all I really wanted to say. Thank you. Well, Josie, I guess if I'm, to me, there are two parallel routes. We can do them both at the same time. I'm not sure what uh, the white paper has anything to do with uh, the fall school year starting and the negotiations with the the insurance company that could go on for months possibly a year or two well look at those negotiations with the insurance company have a great deal to do with how you're going to proceed with the eisenhower building you've already made one decision concerning the eisenhower building and then you're looking at if it's going to become the only elementary building within the district um you'd have a lot of decisions to make there and they're kind of um it's kind of a, a fragile right now, I would think, as you move with them. So they might be parallel, but it's also confusing. If I'm confused, um, uh, and not that I'm not beyond being confused and dazzled or dazed, um, I'm sure that others will be. So I hope you'll proceed judiciously with this. It's, it's confusing to me. Okay, appreciate your comment. And, uh... Yeah, you know, like we, I think we all said earlier, yes, we do have decisions to make, but we'll do it transparently and, and you know, and through some thorough discussions and vetting. But uh, the, go ahead, Tom, you were up next. Yeah, um, I'd like to answer Josie a little bit here. The uh, um, There's no intention of Eisenhower being utilized in fall 21. Um, we have a couple options on, on what to do. We could keep the configuration we have in place. We can move um, the fifth grade to the junior high, um, but um, um, there's there's no way that Eisenhower is coming back up for uh, fall of 21. Um, oh, yeah. It, it's remotely possible to bring it up for fall 22. We have, we, we have, we have the best insurance we can buy 
um, and that number is yet to be determined, but that doesn't um, that doesn't alleviate the planning that goes into um, into the repair or replacement of that building. Um, so I think I think we don't have to we shouldn't wait um, until we have a final number on that. Um, the number is going to be um, what the number is going to be, and we have to figure out what else we have to do. Um, but uh, um, there's really nothing we have that we can do except make the plans for moving ahead. Um, so um, I think we can move ahead with with what makes sense for the community and the district. Um, and um, and at some point we will know what the insurance company is going to pay on this. Uh, thank you for that clarification. Uh, somewhat, I'm looking forward to the. Um, the, the, the months ahead, I assume it will take several months for you to, to uh, filter this out. So thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. Josie, in order, in order to have a chance on, on fall 22, um, it can't take several months. It could take a few months, but it can't, we can't spend six months doing this and, um, without giving up the fall of 22. And, and we may, in fact, have to do that. But I'm, I don't want to start this conversation off thinking that... Uh, um, we have all the time in the world. Thank you. I think the one thing I want to say before, because I, I already forgot this once, Walter, was Walter said his white paper was only to start the discussion. So, Josie and others, please don't read the white paper and think that that's what this district is going to do. There's going to be brainstorming and like i said we're going to use all the reference uh reports that we have from previous architects and consultants to uh come up with what's best for our kids so go ahead walter thank you okay terry yeah let me let me kind of jump in here a little bit um number one i want to make a uh, point out uh, thank you for clarifying uh, first of all, that, that this is a, a an idea that I had that I thought would work with the current configuration. Um, that doesn't mean that it's the final um, uh, final plan or even should be the final plan, but rather it's a, a starting point uh, in a structured uh, discussion uh, to kind of get, uh, get to that point. But I also want to point out that one of the questions on this thing Okay, was about the timing. We, we were going to possibly discuss adding four classrooms or eight classrooms or whatever to Eisenhower now. Um, if I'm a member of the general public, my first question is why? If you've got too much capacity, why are you building more capacity? Adding the office is, is a reasonable um, justification that because of uh, safety and security. If we're going to keep four class four buildings, why are we going to do it? If we're going to go to three classroom or three buildings, why do you want to do that? If you're going to go to two buildings, why do you want to do that? I think we have an obligation here to present a reasonable uh, idea, a reasonable plan based on the academics as to where we want to take this district into the future, and then let that dictate the number of buildings and how they are configured because that makes the most sense to me about driving the conversation from the academic point of view. So the, the bottom line here, and I want to reiterate this, is that um, this is about what is our plan? How do we justify the spending of this next five or six million dollars that we have left in the kitty? And how are we going to support our academic programming behind it? That's the whole goal here. We can't just kind of go willy nilly, put a million here, a million there, put a, another million in this building, another million in that building. What's our plan? Are we just going to keep the four buildings that we have the same configuration when we can clearly put more students um, um, in fewer buildings? Okay. so. That's the reason for this conversation. That's the reason for the white paper was to start that conversation. Now, Barb asked me to review this paper. It's like seven pages long. 
I'll be very happy, Barb, to answer any questions that you might have. I'll be very happy to discuss particular issues or um, ideas in the paper, but I don't know that we want to spend the time and have me read seven pages of um, of this white paper. So, um, you know, I will certainly uh, defer back to Barb and any questions that she might have. But Terry, I think uh, Eric had his uh, hand up and and um, I'll step back for now. Okay, I'll go to Barb first. Barb, do you have anything that you wanted longer to explain or clarify? Well, considering there's no media on this call, there's two members of the public and the rest are employees of the district or board members. Most of us know probably what's in this document. Well, seven, nine, of us, nine of us, ten with Mike. I just thought the rest of the people on the call would like to know what you're talking about. Because um, it's kind of, you know, I understand what you're talking about, but the rest of the call doesn't necessarily understand, or the rest of the public on the call doesn't necessarily understand what you're talking about. Um, that's why I thought, you know, if you could just more so. I can I can certainly give a, a very, very one or two sentence synopsis of yes, just of what I'm trying to do. And if that's what you're looking for, that's not a problem. In essence, what I've done here, ladies and gentlemen, is to put forth the idea that if we're going to maintain the current grade configuration, pre-K to three, four, five, six to eight, nine to 12, that these align pretty much with the, the development of our children, both emotionally, mentally, and physically. But if we're really gonna stay with that configuration, it makes a lot of sense from an academic point of view and from a practical point of view to put the fourth and fifth grade under the same roof and not have them in two separate buildings, especially when you have the room to do that. The second part of that is then I propose that possibly an early childhood education center be developed and, and utilized at, at Horace Mann as Eisenhower would be the most likely building to combine the fourth and fifth grade in under one roof. That's the gist of the plan um, in one or two sentences. And uh, hopefully, Barb, that will have, uh, have met your needs. Thank you. Thanks, Walter and Barb. That was a good question for, because you're right. So most of us on the call here tonight has seen the white paper, so, but some have not. Uh, and then, Mr. Vukovic, I'd sent you a spreadsheet with after uh, getting the white paper at I just brainstormed some different options of, of great configurations too that that can can be considered hopefully at our next meeting and that may help with you know spearheading and starting some brainstorming and some discussion so uh, nobody else has their hands raised hand raised camera go ahead thank you um, I think this discussion is very well needed. I have been a proponent of not having four elementary buildings since before I ran for school board. Um, I think that, um, Walter, one thing that you mentioned that the community is asking questions like, how can we how can we be doing without a building and still service all of our students? That really shows that there is um there is too much capacity and because of that we are wasting taxpayer dollars and that is costing us money that is essentially um uh limiting the programming that we can provide to our students because we're 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 funding buildings instead of programs so i think this is the optimal time to be talking about this um I am, I look forward to see like, how are we going to proceed um, and how quickly, because I think we do need to proceed quickly um, and make a decision. So um, we can determine how many classrooms need to be added to Eisenhower, if that is where we're going to go um, with this. Tamara, Tamara, let me, thank you. Let me really quickly respond to that. Um, 
you know, planning 101 here is, is, is what I had envisioned. And we did something very similar to this when we built the new gym. Um, I guess it's been 15 years ago now or 14 years ago, whatever, whatever. And we started out by taking, you know, kind of a um, number of options here. Again, Terry's, uh, I think, uh, started to circulate, um, um, you know, some options that we should certainly consider. Um, you look at the pluses and minuses of each of those options. Uh, both from an academic, um, um, practical, as well as uh, financial. Um, you then, um, the next step is essentially to rank those uh, pluses and minuses and, and try to come to an um, unemotional decision based on um, um, the facts that we've identified as to why we should do this or why we shouldn't do that. Um, and, and then and then the next step is to pare that down to uh, possibly two um, um, viable um, options and then the board votes on which option they prefer and then we're off to the races and I agree with Tom completely um, there is a certain sense of urgency but not to be rushed um, if we can come to some sort of a conclusion here uh, by early fall, uh, then we have a reasonable chance of completing this, uh, whatever work we're going to do by the following school year. Uh, Terry could be right, it could take longer, but um, that's what I meant by a structured approach to this thing. Uh, I wanted everybody to kind of have a chance to question and, and be kind of open in tonight's meeting but at some point we're going to get kind of down to the brass tacks of figuring this out in as unemotionally, uh, in an unemotional way as possible um, uh, so that we have good data for the decision that we've made. Hopefully that helps answer your question. Um, it does. I think, yeah, early, I think late summer slash early fall um, is really needed. I would say the earlier the better because I would like to see us be able to have the building up and running for next school year, uh, not this school year, but the 2022. Um, I think that it would just be best if we could do that. So I think that, I mean, I know it's summer and we all have vacations planned and we've been working like crazy since March uh, 7th of 2020, <laughs> the week before the pandemic hit, we had meetings every night and and I, I don't think that, I mean, I, I know we're all tired and we're all busy, but I think that maybe throwing a couple extra meetings in there to speed this up um, to make the decisions might be um, worth considering. All right, thank you, Tamara and Walter. I think, Joey, you have your hand raised? Right? Yes. Yes, I do, thank you. Um, Tamara, I agree with what you've said and Tom and Walter, I, I think that paper was an interesting paper. Um, but I do follow your comments, Tamara. Um, but it's not just this board that is fatigued from endless discussions. It's also the public is fatigued. So I don't think it serves any purpose. We've got to agree to rules of the road and a timeline and we have to stick to it. Um, and I don't think we can get distracted because otherwise it just, it's just going to snowball because everybody out there has, is gonna have a separate opinion if they even tune in. And plenty of people will tune in because it's a vital issue. But I think that before I wanna participate, frankly, I wanna see before these meetings um, from Walter, detailed agendas of how you're gonna handle this and we get through them and we don't just have open agendas where we can all just talk and talk and talk about the color of the thread. Um, and the fabric and the furniture. I think we've got to get the big ideas out of the way and then allow the administration to fill in the blanks as best they can because time is getting to be of the essence. So that's my point. I don't want to get involved in, in an endless long meetings and extra meetings because I know Walter, you like meetings um, and meetings are great as long as you get something done, not just talking to talk the next time. So I, I can't emphasize that enough how strong I feel about that, so thank you. Julia, thank you. And you're absolutely right. That's the whole purpose for having a structured meeting. Um, I'm intrigued by Tom's idea of, of the possibility of having an outside uh, person 
um, help with the facilitation of those meetings. Uh, number one, um, if we if we do that, um, they will tend to be uh, relatively sharp and crisp, and 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 kind of move forward in a in a very determined like manner rather than be allowed to to wander aimlessly. Um, um, so, uh, you know, if not, I certainly can put that together uh, once we establish, um, you know, when the when the next time we would want to do this. But I would certainly recommend having that outside uh, help support this. And um, I know Tom was, uh, had spoken to me last Friday about about this possibility and you know, I, I think if he's got somebody in mind or a proposal from someone, we certainly should uh, um, uh, try to get that on the table for next um, uh, next board meeting uh, for the board to consider. Okay, thank you, Walker. Joey, you start your hand up. <laughs> FYI, uh, and Mr. Bukovich, I don't know if you want to share my spreadsheet or do we want to wait for the next meeting? and uh, come up with an agenda. I'll defer to you, Mr. Kerr. I mean, Jared is taking notes. I am ready to go. I'm, I'll, you share with me. I can pull it up. It, it really, you know, we work for the board. depends on your lead and what, what the committee feels. But um, I'll say this, no matter what you decide, we will need a decision, you know, in the near future. So we can tell the architect what to do so we can get moving. But it's up to you, Mr. Um, go Mr. ahead. Go ahead and share. Because then that way, at least, uh, Prior to the next meeting, then, if anybody else has any other options or ideas, we can add those uh, ahead of time, you know, so that people can be thinking about it and stuff like that. And I agree, Julia, I, I think it'll be very important to have a structured agenda at each of the meetings. And I also agree that the facilitator would be a good, is a good idea. And, you know, we're going to hold them to the fire, though, too, you know. When we want to, you know, get through this as painless and without emotions and, you know, best that we can. So, if you can blow that up, Mike, please. Give me one second. Yeah. We can do that. And this, like I said, I just threw this together, you know, after Walter had sent us the white paper. And, you know, these are just some different options uh, coming that I got from the white paper, but also got from, you know, just ideas here. So, and, and a lot of it, like I said before, we've been through this, you know, several years ago, you know, I think all of us that are on the board was involved in the uh, school project. So, you know, we were familiar with those uh, reports and that sort of thing, so. Gary, Gary the, one thing, the one thing I do want to comment on though, is we were never really uh, looked seriously at the fifth grade to the middle school. Uh, as I recall, most of the time we were told that there wasn't sufficient room, uh, but apparently, um, um, Mike and Aaron were able to uh, uh, kind of uh, thread that needle and 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 figure that out, uh, but but that is something new to the mix that we've not uh, not had available to us before. Right, and I I partially you know, I almost agree with you on that, Walter. But we were told that they did thoroughly vet that and that it would not work. So you know. You're right, Mike and, and Aaron made it work and, and uh, the junior high staff. So again, these options are just, I wanted to have something to start some discussion. Uh, if there are any other options that anybody else would want to come up with or can come up with, please let me know. And, and I, you know, I can read these, you know, option one is, you know, the first column there under the primary grades would be the number of buildings what grade would be in them and then the middle school different configurations and then when we get into brainstorming we'll have to somehow track the pros and cons for each one of the options and then uh, there, there potentially could be a one-time savings from you know a sale of property or something like that and then we could have an annual savings 
for a year, and then there could be an estimated cost of doing, you know, the project. Cinda, go ahead. So I've heard a couple times talking about what we're going to have Bukhart Horn do. No matter what we do with the grade configuration, are we or are we not moving ahead with the secure entryway at Eisenhower? And if we are, can we not have them start working on that? That's not associated with the fire insurance. That's not associated with changing the configuration. I, can we go ahead and move ahead with that and at least get that going? Well, I'm going to say no, because we don't know what Eisenhower is going to look like tonight. I think that we, my opinion, and it's just one opinion, is that we need to figure out our, our grade configuration first. Because that may change the office. Because I don't want to do things twice. And I know you don't either, Cindy. No, I don't want to do things twice, but no matter no matter what we do, Eisenhower is going to be open, correct? I don't know that. We haven't made that decision yet. Oh, I'm looking at your, I see, I see your spreadsheet. Okay. All right. I'll look at your spreadsheet some more. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Barb, right, go ahead. So option two that you have, which is number two buildings pre-K to four, is that Eisenhower and East Pike or Eisenhower or East Pike and Mount Franklin? Or either no, or. Like I just mentioned to Cindy, that decision has not been made. And, and do we not have an option four, which is to put it back the way it was? We could have an option four. We, we'll add that. Thank if you. Oh. Yeah, Terry, um, I think you need to keep option zero, option four, the existing configuration for a baseline. And um, I'm going to uh, put an X through your column H, G, H, and I um, as being secondary to um, academic considerations. I agree with them. That's why there's nothing in there. No, no, I understand. We can, we can wait on that. We'll I, figure I, out. I understand. I, I just want to make sure that the um, academic considerations take the take the forefront. But, but option zero or option four needs to be um, um, an, um, what we currently have, because that is certainly still an option. Yes, we'll add that as number four. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Kerr, just to make sure um, Jared's taking good notes, option four is leave everything as is, correct? If I heard everyone cor uh, clearly. Correct. correct. Thank you, sir. Any other comments? Anybody raising their hand? Not seeing anything, we'll go back to the agenda and move on to number four, I think it is, or number three, is it? And Randy, I gave back um, screen sharing capabilities to you, sir. And the next item that we want to talk about is some additional meetings, special meetings, I'll call them, uh, for this topic. And Mr. Vukovic had thrown out July 12th, 19th, and 26th. And uh, the only thing I'm going to throw out is that I would prefer to do them on a Wednesday night or a Thursday night all by themselves. Uh, I think this topic is too important. I think it's going to, you know, involve some, you know, in-depth discussion. And Joey, I'm not trying to have long meetings. I'm trying to have short, uh, abbreviated meetings. Well, yeah, I, I agree with that. But I don't think that we can, nor can we put this board through five-hour meetings. And it seems to me that I joke about it, but I actually think it's true. I don't think you take any 
university, I don't, I don't think they go through very often five hour meet, four hour meetings. It just seems to me that we should be better prepared to discuss and get down to the issues and we should time these meetings at two hours. And if we go over two hours, it should be pretty, it should be pretty important. So we all read what we have to read so we don't have to ask questions about what we've read and what the point is and that we're all ready to go. We know what the four options are if we can agree on that and we move ahead. But I, I don't, I personally don't think things are productive after two hours. I agree. And, and, I, and I, I think the board has to be cognizant that, you know, when I think of a, of a jury or something, you know, you, 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 they say if you don't get if you don't get to it pretty quickly, people start worrying about what they're going to have for dinner or how hungry they are. And I think that's normal human nature. So I can't emphasize that enough. I don't think we can get into uh, uh, endless meetings. Now, if there's going to be public comment, I think that we have to have Mike has to organize that for us so that we have a pretty good idea of what's coming up and not have rambling comments because people have to get to the point. If we want to have normal school, um, as Tamara said in 2022, and that and and we know how long we can debate. We're good at that. But I think we have to improve or else this is just going to take too long. And so I'm sticking to that. I think two hour meetings and um, have tight agendas. We all come in prepared and we get out the door. And uh, then we reconnoiter and, and try it again, but not too many of those either. So thanks, Terry, for letting me speak. Yeah, well said, and I agree with you. Uh, I'm gonna throw out, do we wanna wait till July 12th is my first question. We have, you know, we could, and again, I would rather have them on a different night than other meetings. Well, I guess we don't have any other meetings in July, so we could have them in, on the 12th, 19th, and 26th, sorry. And the other thing I'm going to say, too, is I'd prefer to have these meetings hybrid. I'd prefer to be in the boardroom so that we can have some face-to-face -face discussion, use some easels or whiteboards to do some brainstorming if we have to, or to tally some things up or stuff like that. I think it's, I think, you know, we all agree, I think, that this is a very important decision that we're going to uh, or process that we're going to go through, and it's important that 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 we are, you know, have the opportunity to be in the board room if we want to be. So. With that, are we good with these dates? Michael, get them set up, and do we want to start them at six o'clock. Go ahead. All three days, the twelfth, the nineteenth, and the twenty-fifth. I'm going to say that we should at least plan on that, Barb. If we can get this done in two meetings, great. But I'm, be, I'm a realist. I don't, you know, with community involvement, uh, I, don't, I don't want to shortchange anybody or anything. I think three is more than enough. We've, this community has been running around these issues for 10 years now. You're right. We all pretty much know where we're in our heads, where we want to go. Um, we can argue about the details, but that's what that would that that has to be done in some other format, I think. So I'm I'm willing to go through three meetings, but that's about it for right. me. Okay. If we can't do that, then we're not doing our jobs. Yeah, and that's why, Joey. That's why I put that spreadsheet together uh, ahead of the meeting tonight, just again to try to you know water kick this off. But you know, I, I wanted to keep the ball moving down the field. So I, I you know hopefully we have those four options, and then we you know, brainstorm the pros and cons and then move on. Thomas, you have your hand raised. Yeah, yeah. Um, a couple things. Uh, f first off, um, let's let's um, let's get the input from the facilitators. And um, we can certainly look at 12, 19, 26 as a, as a, as a good goal here. Um, also, um, I like the um, um, the uh, hybrid type meeting um we get a lot more folks come involved when they when they come in over the uh, internet than in person so that works out well um and finally um there's many more than four options that you that that we outlined today um some of them are uh, need to be considered um so um uh, i don't want to start off the conversation saying these are the four choices um I think we need to. I think we take the three days, and um, and develop those choices, and then uh, make make an informed choice about what makes the most sense for the district and the community. Thank you. Well, I'd like to tell them just to keep things moving. If anybody has 
another option that they want considered. I think that needs to be submitted ahead of time so that it can be on the uh, sheet. I agree. Ahead of time. I agree with that. Submit it before. Yeah. Right. Let's try to get, you know, not slow this thing down. Cinda. So I, I agree. I agree with um, what Tom just said, but as a caution to what Julia and a couple of other people have said about this is something that's been discussed for the last 10 years. We all know what we think. We all know where we're going. That's, that's very apparent that members of the board all have definite opinions, but I think we need to be absolutely careful to be very transparent and very welcoming of discussion from the community because Everybody knows that everybody on the board already has opinions and a lot of people in the community have opinions and it's going to be seen as being not transparent if people are shut down, not allowed to talk, if agendas are so tight and so restricted that there can't be free give and take. So it's going to be a fine line to walk. And if you get a facilitator in and the facilitator is handed an agenda and told to follow this, they'll follow it, but if the agenda is too rigid and not open enough for um, the public to be able to have meaningful input, then I, we just need to be careful. We can't go slow, but we can't go so fast that it looks like we're steamrolling. I don't think, I, I'm not proposing steamrolling anybody or not being transparent, but I didn't we say have come into these meetings in the past too unorganized. And we've got to get our act together because time is of the essence. So I'm not suggesting that we don't let people have input or anything like that. If more than three message, uh, uh, meetings become necessary, that's on down the line. But, but um, we can't come in at our usual point of, well, let's put all the options on the table, Tom. What are they? Get them out there. You can't just imagine options. We have to actually know what they are in advance. I feel strongly about that or else we won't make a decision. There's nine of us, It's too, it gets too complicated. And I think Mike is good at logistics and can handle public comment, perhaps in a creative way. That's all I'm saying, thank you. Carrie, just, just I, I think the question uh, really comes down to, are we, um, yes, we need to look at, at good viable uh, alternatives. I, I don't doubt that for a minute. The problem is how many rabbit holes do we have to go down where we decide what is a good good viable alternative and and i think that's where we run into trouble is um if we have to go down every single rabbit hole uh then then yes we're this thing is going to get bogged down and 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 it'll, it'll fall apart on the other hand um and that's why i kind of like your idea of submitting um um you know the viable alternatives ahead of time and yes, if somebody from the public has something that's legitimate, um, we should absolutely take a look at it. But if 20 people from the public come with 20 different ideas, I'm not so sure that we're going to be able to look at every one of those uh, 20 different options because it's just too many rabbit holes. Um, but at any rate, why well, that's uh, that's kind of where I think that we're, we're trying to figure out what's a rabbit hole and what. It's a good viable alternative. Okay, well, uh, Barb. Thanks, Terry. Um, so if we want the public to be involved, we have to reach out to the public. So um, then that makes you wonder, do we need an outreach meeting um, to brainstorm on how to reach out to the public? Because it usually takes many weeks or not months for the public to figure out what we're doing. Um, like I said, we didn't even get any media on this call tonight. Um, so I may ask for an outreach meeting and to brainstorm with administration to make sure that uh, the public knows. And uh, so I was just giving a heads up. And Tamara unfortunately jumped off, so I can't um, ask her. Okay. What time do we want to start these meetings? We want to keep them at 530? on July 12th, 19th, 26th, is that good? Yeah, Mr. Kerr, only thing I would add is, sir, just remember July 12th is a regular board meeting. It's our only meeting in July. Um, but uh, you know, for sake of consistency, I'm fine with 5.30, I just want to throw it out there. 
about about July 12th, sir. That is a regular board meeting. Okay. Mr. Harley. I think um, I'm going to take issue with Walter's comment that um, there are going to be some rabbit holes we're going to go down here. Um, and we can't we can't block um, alternatives um, um, without without some reasoning. Um, so um, we, there's going to be some inefficiencies in this discussion, um, but um, um, I, for one, do not have a preconceived notion of what we should be doing. Um, I'm interested in seeing what the facts develop and where, where the community uh, thinks we should go. Um, it's, um, um, I'm also hopeful that um, when we look at these things and look at these alternatives, that, uh, that, uh, that, that one of them becomes very obvious of what we should do. So um, I'm willing to uh, um, work with the process here and, um, and arrive, at a, arrive at a solution that we all can live with. Um, and I just want to I just want to make that clear that that um, um, we are not limited to to um, four and a half options um, that there's that there's many, many things that we should look at um, population trends, um, employment trends, uh, facilities that we have, uh, where the academics are going, um, what support that needs to be happening in these buildings. Um, um, we've learned a lot. Um, uh, in the last uh, two years about what needs to be in, a, in an elementary school. Um, so we need, to, we need to put that all into a soup and, and, and figure out what comes out of it. So okay, please, cool. please, right. please, do not, please do not limit the conversations to, uh, to, uh, to a certain number of options here. All right. Yeah, the Joe, are you there? Uh, as being the only member of the public here, um, I guess my comments will, uh, they're kind of limiting, but I agree with what Mr. Harley said. I really do think that you, you can't limit um, the options. I'm not saying you can't limit the debate. Uh, uh, you have to have some structure to that. And Mrs. Barker made a very good point, I think, about having uh, either a, Mr. Vukovic is very good at press releases, having a press release go out um, or and inviting people to the um, Mrs. Barker's committee to come and having the white paper available. There are many ways you can do this without, without uh, totally uh, creating a tempest in a teapot. Um, I think that you really, I, I like what Mr. Harley said. I think that's very important. I like what Mrs. Barker said. And I understand where Mrs. Uh, Kukuro and Mrs. Leeper are coming from. Um, it has been discussed over a period of time. However, everything changes. Uh, the way you look at certain things changes. So I think you have to give the opportunity for that discussion. And I appreciate your allowing me to make these comments because it's important that I understand along with the other members of the public. So it's, it's, it's going to be something that you're going to undertake. And I'm, I'm hoping that as I keep using the word judicious, I hoping, I'm hoping that's what you will be. Thanks for allowing me to speak. Okay. Thanks, Jody. And, and I agree. I think, uh, you know, Mike, you know, you and Walter or whatever can work on an outreach program to, you know, prior to that July 12th meeting, it may be contacting, you know, Chauncey and, and Josh ahead of time to let them know what's going on. Yes, sir. And I can work with Ms. Parker about setting up an outreach committee. We can brainstorm those other options there if you'd like as well, sir. Do yep. that relatively soon. Um, full disclosure, uh, not that it really matters, sir, but I am going on vacation the first week in July. So are you okay if I um, start work working with Ms. Parker sooner rather than later just so I can uh, – keep my marriage <laughs> absolutely all right fair enough. all right i don't see anybody else's hand raised so good meeting tonight appreciate it at least it wasn't uh sun shining and you couldn't cut your grass tonight anyway so anything else we're gonna go to the order miss barker if you could just contact me tomorrow we can uh contact my office we can go from there about picking a date if that's okay with you yeah, I just sent Tamara a message asking her what uh, days are good for her. So I'm, I'm pretty free for the next week. 
Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye.